Today we're going to be talking about inverters, and we're going to be specifically talking about one that was provided to me by Sun Gold Power. It is a 3000 watt, 12 volt inverter. They reached out to me and they said, would you be willing to take a look at this and share it with your viewers? And I said, sure, we'll take a look at it and we'll see if it's any good or any bad for that matter. Now I've been playing with this for a while and I really like it. It's been a solid inverter and I think it's going to be perfect for maybe an RV install or even an off-grid home. Now this is going to be installed in my RV and we're going to do a second video on how to install this but what I want to do right now is just show you the ins and outs of what this inverter is and we'll talk about all of the features and what makes this a very cool inverter. It's priced pretty competitively and I think it's a really good bang for the buck. I will put a link down below in case you guys are interested and for now I think we just want to talk about the ins and outs and some of the features of this guy and then on the second video we'll install it in my RV and we'll see how it works. Now let's discuss inverters and explain why you may need one. Now what an inverter does is it typically converts DC to AC and this style of converter will take the 12 volts that you normally find on your RV and it'll increase that to 120 volts AC. This is a 3000 watt model so it's going to provide you 3000 watts of electricity. Now not all inverters are the same. Obviously there's different sizes of inverters, this is a 3000 watt model, but there's also different input values. This is a 12 volt inverter. You can buy 24 volt, 48 volt, but since we're going to be using this in an RV, it makes sense to have a 12 volt input for our inverter. Also, there is the quality. A pure sine wave inverter is really what you want for an RV. It's going to protect all of your electronics and all of the motors and things like in your air conditioner or any refrigerators you have. It's going to make it really easy for those electronics. It's not going to be hard on them. There's another type of inverter out on the market called a modified sine wave inverter. They're a little bit cheaper, but the problem with those is the electricity in a nutshell is just a little bit more dirty. You really want a pure sine wave inverter. This particular model has an adjustable onboard battery charger capable of up to 90 amps. You can dial that back and adjust it as needed. So if you had a smaller battery bank and you didn't want to shove 90 amps into it, you could dial that back to maybe 25% and that might be an adequate size for your battery bank. But if you needed that full 90 amps, it can do it. Now what's in the box? Well, you get the device itself. You get a remote control. We'll talk about that in a bit. There's some covers for the DC power in. There's a cover for the AC power in and there is a battery temperature sensor followed with a pretty detailed manual. On one end of the inverter, you're going to find a couple of breakers. One is for the charger input and one is for the inverter output. There is also a 20 amp outlet and there is a panel to hardwire this into your system. When you hardwire it, that is how you access the internal transfer switch. The first three connections here are your line in. This is what we're going to feed our shore power into. Shore power is what we call the AC that we feed our RV with. The next three is the line output, and this is what you would feed back into your panel, your breaker panel inside your RV. There is also a cover that you can bolt back onto this after you wire it up, making it a little bit more safe. On the other end of the panel, you'll find some lugs for your DC input. There's also covers for these inputs as well that you can bolt on after you hook it up. There is a interface for your remote start on your generator. There is a place for the battery temperature sensor. There is also a port for the remote. So if you want to use the remote, this is where you would plug that into. And there's a set of dip switches for various configurations. There's also a very important grounding lug. Looking at the top of the inverter, there is a very simple control panel, and this control panel gives you at a very quick glance what's going on with the inverter. There's a power button that turns it on and off. You can also put this unit in power save, and the three lights are very simple. The first one is the battery charger is on and it's on shore power. The second light tells you if it's on inverter power, and the third light is an alarm light. If this light is on, there's probably something wrong and you need to take a look at it. There's another set of indicator lights on this panel here and a couple of adjustments. The first adjustment is the battery type. Now, since this has a built-in battery charger, it does need to know the battery type so it can charge it appropriately. The next one is a dial, and that dial allows you to fine-tune your charging current. If you have a small battery bank, you might want to turn this all the way down to about 25%. If you have a large battery bank, then you'll turn it all the way back up, and this unit can provide up to 90 amps of charging capabilities. There's a series of LEDs. They're pretty simple. The first one is power save function, and it's online. The next light, if you overload this unit, it is smart enough to shut itself down, but it's going to give you a fault alarm. The next light over is an over temperature trip. If something overheats, it's also going to shut itself down to protect itself 
and it's going to let you know. The light to the right of that is the charger on float charge mode light. Basically, a really good battery charger will back itself down and go into what we call float mode. Float mode is the charging voltage for that battery while it's at rest. So you always want to charge your batteries appropriately, and as soon as they're done charging, you need to put them on a float mode so you don't burn them up. This unit will do that, and it'll tell you that it's doing it. The next light over is charger is on fast charge mode. If your batteries are really low, it's going to put a lot of amps into them to charge them back up as quick as it can. This light's going to tell you that it's doing that. The light next to that is the inverter is online and the battery charger is off. So if you're in a condition where you have no shore power and you're running on inverter, you can expect to see this light. And the light to the right of that is the exact opposite. The shore power is online and the battery charger is active. There's also a really cool LCD screen that gives you a lot of intel. It kind of rotates through that information as you're watching it. And as you can see right now, the battery voltage is 13.6 volts. The AC is normal. The line input is 123 volts. Those would be the mains coming in on my house. We're at 60 hertz, still 123 volts. And in bypass mode means we're not using the internal inverter. The transfer switch is using the shore power. I have this set up on my workbench and I want to simulate some of those conditions so you can see what the indicator panels do and how this thing operates. The conditions are pretty simple right now. I have it plugged into a relatively small battery and I also have the AC mains of the house plugged into it and I have a small space heater plugged into the outlet on the side. Right now the conditions are good. It basically says that the, the battery is on float mode so I know my battery is good and the shore power is on and the charger is active. So everything is functioning as it should. I'm going to unplug the power to this unit and I want you to watch the indicator lights. It's going to know that it lost power and it's going to go into inverter mode. That beep lets us know that it just lost power. And if you look at the light, you can see that it's now on inverter power and the charger is turned off. The display mode changes a little bit because within this display, it'll show you the load. Now I'm going to plug in a little space heater and that space heater is going to be running on this inverter and it's going to pull a little bit of power. Now the space heater is plugged in. We're still in inverter mode. AC is abnormal because the inline voltage is zero, so it knows it needs to be on inverter. The load is 21%. I purposely use the space heater because they use a lot of power. The battery is now dropping to 11.8. Now I'm going to plug the unit back into AC power. It's going to sense that power. It's going to beep and it's going to switch automatically over to the AC power and quit using inverter power. There's the beep. Now that takes about 15 seconds for that to happen. That's built into the unit by design. And that's typically because when power is first restored, sometimes it's a little bit dirty. So the unit waits 15 seconds before it switches over. And hopefully by that time, the AC power that's been restored is a lot cleaner. Now this is a good stopping point for this video and where you should decide if you want to like or subscribe. We are going to do another video where we install this inverter in my RV and we're going to test it in real world conditions. Take a look at some of my other videos and at the very least, you might be entertained.